Okay, so the next tool that we want to look at or skill that we want to look at with regards to quantitative risk assessment is decision trees. And of course, decision trees are going to use uh, a graphical representation, a tree uh, progression, uh, which denotes choice, uh, and our equivalent value calculations, which we looked at briefly in the introductory uh, video. So it's well suited to everyday problems. Uh, where we want to pick from one option or another or to compare mitigation strategies and determine whether they're appropriate. Uh, so we set it up in a, a tree type uh, diagram. I'll show the diagram here. And so we have a choice event where a choice is asked. And then we have a risk event, which would have to break down into probabilities. And then if we get to the end of our calculation, and each one of those would be associated with an equivalent value, which can then sum up to collective equivalent values as you move back through the tree. So it is a good set of calculations, but perhaps more importantly, is that the thinking process that you have to go through in preparing the decision tree really puts you in tune with what the real risks are uh, for your project. So regardless of how the numbers turn out, your awareness of the risk and how you can potentially manage that risk uh, are enhanced uh, considerably. So let's see an example. Uh, so in this case, we're looking at uh, a crane option. So we're planning an activity that requires use of a crane, no big deal. Uh, now we have a choice. We can either rent a small crane or a large crane, which you would think is just a technical choice as to how much it can lift, but it's not. The small crane costs less, as you would expect, $10,000 instead of the $16,000 for the large crane, but it is slower. Uh, as currently planned, the activity is not on the critical path, in which case, uh, I know we haven't done scheduling yet, but if it's not on the critical path, my, you know, slight delays are not likely to affect the overall project uh, as far as delay goes. However, an analysis has indicated that there's a 30% probability that the activity will become critical, in which case any delays on that activity would delay the project. In this case, each day's delay in the activity will cost the project $5,000 quite normal that delays cost money. The table indicates that the delay probabilities, so uh, uh, short, medium, or long, and their respective delays associated with whether you have the small or large crane, because one works slower and the other works faster. So what we want to do, because it's now starting to get sufficiently complicated that it's not obvious what the best choice is, is we want to use our uh, decision tree uh, to determine the monetary values or the expected monetary values, expected values uh, with a risk neutral attitude and decide which crane we should book for the task. So let's uh, build it out. So this is the same table we had on the last slide and we're going to build our decision tree. So we start with our decision and we have to choose between the small crane or the large crane and we branch off into the two different directions. So then we have a probability impact. Is it on the critical path or is it not on the critical path? And that will matter because if we're not delaying the project, then we're not gonna realize the impact of that $5,000 a day. And so 30% chance we said that it would be on the critical path. So off we go on a probability line. And so we've inserted 0 0.3 as the probability that we're on the critical path. And a 70% because it's one minus that. So 70% likelihood that we're not on the critical path and that will take us off to, to the end of that particular arm. So if we are on the critical path, we have to concern ourselves with the delay and there's a probability of how much that delay is, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, or 0.3 for a long, medium, or short delay. And so we have three branches off of the node uh, reflecting the different delays. So we're on the small crane path. So a long delay would be 10 days with a probability of 20%. And that's right out of the table. And we can go ahead and look at the other paths in that line. So a medium path would be five days at 50% likelihood, and a short delay would be 
uh, two days at a 30% likelihood. And of course, if we're not on the critical path, it's going to have zero days impact to the project. It doesn't cost us anything. So we just go with zero days. And then we fill out the same information for the other side. So the last thing we have to do is to actually calculate the equivalent values or the equivalent monetary values. And of course we do that. We saw this before that we have to take our probability and we have to multiply it by the cost of the, or the impact. And so we have our probability. And so in this case, because, you know, unlike the, the easy example we saw in the introductory video, we have multiple probabilities that are coming together. So we have a 30% chance we're on the critical path and a 20% chance that we're in a long delay. So we have 0.3 times 0.2. So then we have to figure out what the value is. And in this case, it's $10,000 to rent the small crane and $5,000 per day of delay, so 10 times 5,000. And so we see that the monetary value or monetary uh, expected value for that particular branch is $3,600. And then we calculate the same thing all the way down our tree for each of those lines. We figure out what the expected value is. Now we still have another step because we have to roll that up towards our decision point. And so we can calculate that on node A, the equivalent monetary value, the equivalent value is equal to $17,650, whereas the equivalent value on the large crane path or at node C is $18,650. So we, we just have to remind ourselves, are we talking costs, in which case we want a lower value. If we're talking uh, opportunity or benefits, then we want a, a higher value. In this case, it's costs. And so we see that the best option is the uh, small crane. And so we make a decision to go with the small crane and we know that our equivalent value is just slightly less than $18,000. So we're going to do one more example uh, of a decision tree just to, to grow our, our comfort with it. Uh, in this case, we're going to look at a hypothetical automobile manufacturer who is considering which new car models to develop uh, for their business. And so they've come up with three options. Uh, they can develop a gasoline car model. They can uh, develop a hybrid car model, or they could do both. Now, depending on whether they perceive gasoline prices increasing, decreasing, or fluctuating, will change the profitability of those various options. And so what they've done is they've built this table, which gives you the probability of each of those occurrences. So is gasoline price going to go up 50%? Is it going to decrease 30%? Is it going to fluctuate uh, estimated 20%? And then what they estimate their profitability would be, and this is showing in millions of dollars, uh, depending on whether they pursue the gasoline only, the hybrid only, or do both. And so what we wanna do is wanna build up our, uh, our decision tree. And so we're gonna start down here. Uh, we have choices. We can go gas, hybrid, or both. That's the question. And so we have a node for each of those going off in three different branches. Now, we'll start with the gasoline uh, car model. And we'll see, okay, there's a 50% chance that the price of gas will go up. And if that's the case, then we have that 50% or 0 0.5 multiplied by the 1200 million profitability to give us an expected value of $600 million. And then we do the same thing for the decrease at 30%. So 0 0.3 times 600 million or 180 million is our equivalent value. And finally fluctuate at 0 0.2 uh, to get 0 0.2 times 300 or $60 million. Uh, and so that gives us an equivalent value for the gasoline model choice of 840 million. And when we look at the hybrid, we'll roll that out. We'll do the same calculations. It comes up with an equivalent value of 800 million. And finally, if we hedge our bets and we go for both, uh, we get an equivalent value of 650 million for the both option. And so because now we're talking about profitability, profitability or benefits, the higher the equivalent value, the better it is for us. And so we would look at these numbers and choose the 840 million equivalent value and decide that the gasoline option development was the best. 
And so that would be our choice. So that really is the nature of decision trees uh, and a couple different options. Uh, it's a good exercise to go through and it will certainly get you thinking about your specific risk in detail and inform whatever your mitigation strategy should be.